stop here for now. All right. Um, because my hand is stuck to the can.
right, guys. So here's the 210. We uh, painted the frame over the past couple days. And uh, as you can see, I actually, there was a bit of a gap between when I made videos, and now uh, I started throwing her back together. Um, so first we'll just go over the frame. You guys saw it in the time lapse, and uh, it took, I believe, three days to do it overall. Um, I had my dad do it because he's, like I, I think I said in one of my other videos, he's much better with paint than I am, and uh, I probably would have screwed it up pretty bad. And we only had four, paint, uh, four cans of Blitz Black. So I wanted to make sure my dad put it on nice and evenly, and believe it or not, this is only one coat. And look how nice it turned out. I mean, it's a good finish, and I hear it's pretty good for professional restorations too. So I mean, I don't want this to be like expo quality restoration, but I want it to be both a show and a work tractor. I'll take it down to the fair this month if I can get it done in time. And... Uh, yeah, the uh, the Blitz Black was a good choice because there's all different kinds of blacks and you can um, you can mix and match them, but then they just don't look good. And uh, this was it's also a pretty original look too. It's I think it's my favorite sheet of black that John Deere offers. So it was right there on the shelf at the dealer, so we grabbed it, and uh, I would highly recommend using it. So we went over it a few times. We actually didn't. It, it wasn't professionally done. Like we didn't take everything apart out of it like the motor mounts and the steering column and all that stuff we left that stuff on it um, and we took the wheels off and put them back on as we switched areas and we went over I, after the paint dried I went back over it a few times and uh, coated uh, certain uh, spots where we missed it especially underneath there was a lot of spots underneath that needed it but uh, there's just another look and so after the paint dried, I started throwing her back together. I uh, I painted the wheels. I'm not sure if I mentioned that already, but I painted the wheels. It took me four other days. I spent four days last week doing that. Masked them off with masking tape and then gave each side two coats because when I paint, it, uh, each coat is pretty heavy. So I did two coats on each side, which is, that's, that's uh, 16 coats basically for all the wheels. Then I put them back on and I tightened the lug nuts down. Uh, I was thinking about hit, painting the hubs green because I saw a few other people did that too, but I uh, I changed my mind because I didn't think it looked all that great. Um, I I ordered new snap rings because I lost when we had the 210 sandblasted last year. Uh, we took the front wheels off and we lost the snap ring, so I ordered two new ones, and uh, I just put them on there. I had to borrow. Um, I had to borrow a pair of snap ring pliers from my uncle because apparently I don't have any. Um, I have every other type of plier imaginable. But uh, anyway, so the front wheels are on good now. And I've actually been rolling it around, just kind of putting it in neutral and rolling it around. My eight-year-old cousin sat on the gas tank and I just kind of rolled her around. It was cute. Um, I cleaned the gas tank. I, I, I'm not sure if I should get a new pad for that or not. It doesn't, it shouldn't really matter, but... Uh, I got a new fuel uh, cap too, and this is uh, this is it's made by a company called Kelch, and they've been making the uh, fuel caps for John Deere for a long time. And this is their newest style. It's got the five images uh, for the fuel uh, level, and it, you can see it's got the hold air for the vapors to get out. And basically, how this works is the um, that white piece there, wherever you, whatever you want to call it, as the fuel level goes down, that slides with it, and when that slides, it turns that metal rod, that twisted metal rod, which um, makes the gauge move. So that's actually really neat. And since these tractors never had like an onboard gas gauge, like on the dash, um, like the big, like the 425s and the, the X700s and all, that, all those models, I thought it would be cool to have. So um, the 318 has that, but it's the old one. It's the old black one, the uh, original one. Um, moving on. I put the steering wheel on and straightened it out, mostly. It needs a little bit more adjusting, but that should be good to go. Uh, here's a look at the dash. I had to take a hacksaw and cut the variator latch off because it was just, it was bent. I tried putting it in the right way and it was bent. Then I couldn't screw the handle in there, so I just hacked it off and pulled it out. And I ordered a new one that should be com coming in soon. Uh, I put the shifter knob back on. That, that's got mold on it. I don't know how, but... Um, I'm going to replace that at some point. I put the parking brake knob back on it. There's the key. 
put a new nut on that, and I, I think I showed you guys all that stuff already, but uh, um, there's the solenoid I took the tape off of and it mounted that on there, and uh, here's the wiring harness. The wiring harness actually turned out to be a mess because for some stupid reason I pulled the electrical tape off just because I thought it was old and needed to be replaced and the wires got everywhere. So I went on uh, my tractor form and printed out a wiring diagram. And from that I plugged everything in. You can see I have the wires running to the, um, the ammeter, the light switch, um, PTO switch, and the ignition switch. And then just today I went through and I used electrical tape and I taped everything up. And I just need to pull it out and put it in the right spots now. Um, I have a new seat safety or neutral state safety switch coming in from China, but uh, I ordered it on eBay. So I put the throttle and choke cables back on it. Uh, the throttle the throttle moves easily, but the there's actually you can see on the end of the line there that's actually not catching. That's supposed to move it. But that, that little line there isn't catching, so I have to hook that on, then the throttle will work. Um, what else? Let's see. Oh, I'll go underneath it. I reinstalled... Uh, you can't see that. Um, I reinstalled the helper spring and the rear lift rod. It's really hard to see. I apologize for that. You know, let me turn the light on real quick. Alright, so there's the helper spring. Uh... You can see there's my redneck uh, bolt and washer set up there, but it, it's all hooked in. I mean, you can see here's the rock shaft, and then you have the the rear lift rod and the helper spring. There's supposed to be a retaining pin that comes with the helper spring, but the parts no longer made by are no longer available from the dealer. So uh, you can see there's some parts of the paint that I missed, but they're no big deal. Nothing major. Um, so I got that hooked in. And I also, actually just today, I ran out to Napa Auto Parts, and I bought a new fuel line, and I got, I have some uh, black zip ties. And something that these tractors actually never had was a fuel filter. I don't know why, I mean, it's good to filter gas, but uh, this never had it, and I figured it'd be good to have it, and these things are dirt cheap, so I bought one on eBay. And I went to uh, Napa, I got the clamps, you see there's one there and one there. I uh, cut the line, stuck the filter on and then put the clamps on it. And uh, this, it's hard to see here, but the, the frame rail has a lip. And that lip is just right in the corner there, that's for the fuel line to go. And then it has these couple holes, I think there's three or four of them. And you zip tie it down. And then that hooks up to the shutoff valve, which uh, I was thinking about adding a separate shutoff valve, because the ones on the uh, the fuel tanks when they're original like that they tend to get rotted out and stuff like that but I wasn't gonna bother uh, so yeah so so that's that and I, I still have to put the motor back in it I'm waiting for my dad and my grandfather to get over here my dad's at work so um, when he gets home I'm gonna take we're gonna take the motor you can see our redneck motor stand over there we're gonna take that Drop it back in. I gotta fix these motor mounts or do something because the the rubber isolators are bad. And these things cost thirty bucks a piece. I'm not spending hundred twenty dollars on new ones, so uh, I'll figure that out. So I have the front of the fuel line here with the clamp on it, and I'm just gonna hook that up to the fuel pump right there, and then uh, we should be good to go. I just gotta get the battery charging. I've been bringing parts over here from the garage across the street where the tractor, where we took it apart, and uh, I actually thought we would be taking it, or putting it back together there, but apparently not. Um, but yeah, there's there's the battery there, so i got to figure out how to hook that back up. I, I painted the, um, the side pedestal and the battery tray. The battery tray is weird though, because it's like... The way it's shaped is just weird, like it doesn't balance on the pedestal. And then uh, I got enough paint out to paint the draft plate, and I almost ran out of paint. So I'm glad we got it done, though. There's a couple spots I can still touch up because I'm kind of OCD about that, but it's no big deal. Um, come on, focus. <laughs> so I went on greenfarmparts.com last night, and I ordered all new bolts. 
actually pretty expensive, but I ordered all new bolts for the sheet metal and for the battery post and all that stuff because I have the original bolts and nuts and washers and stuff like that, but they're all rusty. So I went and ordered new ones, and it's you know it's better in the long run. So that's where the battery tray bolts in right there. I got to figure out how to get this wiring harness around it. I should have waited till the battery was in, but oh well. All right, so uh, soon we're going to put the motor back in it, and uh, at some point, now that I have the fuel line and everything, and I'll charge the battery, and maybe we can get the 210 started. Uh, she hasn't started since about a week after I got her last August. I got her August 13th of last year, so a week after that, I, uh, I was working on it. My friend was over, so I fired it up for him, and that was the last time before we took it apart. So, yep, so... It's exciting. You can see we still have to paint the sheet metal. I'm waiting for my buddy. Um, they're working hard on the farm right now, so I'm waiting for him to find a day when he's available and we'll paint the sheet metal. So, uh, But other than that, once we get every, the motor and the battery back in, it should be drivable. So, uh, yep, so stay, updated, or, uh, stay tuned, guys, and I'll keep you updated. And uh, this is exciting, getting close to the end of the restoration.